Hello, everybody. This is Chuck Carnival, co-founder of Fast Graphs, the powerful fundamentals analyzer software tool. You know, I believe if you invest in stocks, then you really need to watch this video because if you invest in stocks, you need Fast Graphs. As long-term investors, you intuitively know that you're investing in the business, and it's the business that generates the long-term returns and not the stock market. As I often say, it's a market of stocks and not a stock market. In Fast Graphs, the Fundamentals Analyzer software tool are the only investing tool and resource that actually focuses on the business behind the stock first and foremost, and then the stock price secondarily. Therefore, if you invest in stocks, you're investing blindly without the benefit that these graphs provide you. But on the other hand, if you don't understand what you're looking at when you look at a Fast Graph or watch any of my Fast Graph videos, then you really can't appreciate the benefit that they offer. Therefore, I'm going to start this video by evaluating the company Federal Express. I'm going to do it piece by piece as I build a complete Fast Graph for you from start to finish. The heart and soul of a Fast Graph, or the essence, if you will, is the principle that in the long run, earnings drive market price or earnings determine market price. So what the orange line on the fast graph shows is the company's earnings per share at a fair value multiple that's calculated by using formulas that are widely utilized for valuing a business. So you could look at the orange line as kind of an intrinsic valuation line or valuation reference line as I like to call it. Now in the fast facts box over here to the right, the color coded section, we tell you what the PE of the orange line is. So in this particular case, we're looking at a PE E ratio of 15. Anywhere that the stock price would touch that orange line, it would be a 15 PE ratio. But here's the key point. Now I'm going to add monthly closing stock prices to this graph. And what I want you to understand or see is that in the long run, the stock price goes where the company's earnings go. The two work in tandem. Now, it's not never a perfect fit because the market's an auction and people are always buying and selling virtually every minute of every trading day. So stock prices will get disconnected. There'll be times when they get above the earnings line, like we saw here, and that's when the market is essentially overvaluing the company. And then, of course, we always see it reverting back to the mean. But you're also going to see times like at the throes of the Great Recession when the market undervalues the stock. And that is seen when the price is below the orange line. And then, of course, when the price is touching the orange line, it would be just right. But what should be very clear by looking at this graph is that in the long run, it's the business, the orange line, the growth of the business, and the mountain chart of these total earnings that actually not only drive market price, but drive shareholder returns. Now, I also want to point something else out. What you see so far is what I call the capital appreciation component of investing in a common stock. And the Fast Graphs also has a built-in calculator tool. So in this case, I'm looking at the stock from point A, which is May 31st, 2000, a price of 35.50, going to point B, which is yesterday's closing price or a price of $134.20. And what that generated was a 278% growth. In other words, virtually just less than a tripling of the value of the business. So that's your capital appreciation component. However, there's another aspect of investing in common stocks. If the stock pays a dividend, you also get the dividend. So I'm going to add the dividend line to the graph now, which is the white line on the graph you see here. And this is the dividend and POR stands for payout ratio. The area below this white line represents the portion of the company's total earnings that are paid out in dividend. Now, the tool is very, very dynamic. It allows you not just to calculate performance like I showed you. But if you point to any of these dots, like if you point to any of the dots on the white line, it tells you what the dividend payout ratio is. Now, in May of 2005, FedEx only paid out 5.9% of their total profit. And then you can see as you run your eye across as time went on, then the payout ratio by May 31st, 2018, had increased to 13.1%. And you can see that visually on the fast graph, but you're also seeing what portion of earnings the company is paying out in the form of dividend. And so you get that instantaneous perspective with the tool. Now, the second component of your total return is the dividend income. So we don't just show it with this white line. We also then put a light green shaded area on top of the orange line so that you can also see the dividends in addition to the capital appreciation component. This is really a metaphor saying you don't just get the growth of the price valuation. You also get the dividend income. And when you look at a fast graph long term performance report, you see that very clearly. This is based on a proverbial $10,000 investment. In this example, May 31st, 2000, again, there's that $35.50 price I showed you. That 
$10,000 investment would have grown to $37,802. Now that's a 6.9% annualized rate of return, but as you saw in the previous performance calculation, a 278% total growth because $10,000 turned into $37,802. We compare that to the market, the S&P, which would have turned $10,000 into $21,688. But the second component is that dividend income stream, and we list the dividends here, and I want you to notice that in addition to the 37,000 shareholders would have also got $4,160.58 in dividends, bringing the total to $41,963 for a 7.4% annualized rate of return compared to only 4.9% annualized total return that you'd have earned investing in the market. But the point is what fast graphs are showing you here is they're showing you the company, they're showing you how the stock price is driven by the company's results, and then we're showing you the dividend income, how much the company's profits the company shares with you as a shareholder, and you get this all in a nice visual and very clean and easy perspective here. Now, the orange line, as I mentioned, is a valuation reference line. However, we also provide a second valuation reference line, which we call the normal price earnings ratio, and this is more of a market value. The orange line is an intrinsic value line. The blue line would be more, I like to think of it as a market value, or how the market has historically valued the company over whatever time frame. Now, if I was going to change time frames here, which you can do here, this line would change. But for sake of the demonstration video here, I want you to see that I've got a PE ratio of 17.72 now drawn on this graph. So anywhere I would touch the blue line, it would get a 17.7 PE. So when the stock price is touching that blue line, it's going to be right at that 17.7 PE ratio. But the key is this is your complete fast graphs now. What you're seeing is earnings per share, dividends after they've been paid out, dividends before they're paid out, and how the stock price tracks earnings in the long run. I want to now bring your attention to the fast facts box because it gives you all the details of the stock. Closing price for the previous day, the blended PE ratio, what the stock is currently trading at. You can point to that here and see that it pops up at 14.15. The earnings yield, which is the inverse of the PE ratio, a very important number. I always like to see a number above six and a half to seven percent here. So that indicates that FedEx is slightly undervalued to fairly valued. Then of course the dividend yield is 1.94 percent. And then down at the bottom, bottom here, you see the sub-industry that the company's in. It's air freight and logistics, of course. We give you the market cap, the total enterprise value, the company's credit rating, how much debt to capital and where it trades, etc. So with fast graphs, you get this instant look at how the business behind the stock has driven the stock price over the long run. And you also get to see how dividends have been and how generous the company's been with paying those dividends. In addition to the PE ratios that are listed in this color-coded section, I also want you to know that you get the company's earnings growth rate. So now FedEx has grown at about 7.96%. Now that you're kind of familiar with fast graphs, let me show you a second example of a slower growing utility stock, Southern Company. Now with this example, I want you to notice a couple of things. It's the same exact iteration. You have the white line as the dividend line. You can see the dividend has been very consistent. But in this example, you can see that as a utility stock, they pay out most of their earnings in dividends. So in other words, as a shareholder, you're getting over 75 you know, almost 77% of the company's total profits and earnings. But once again, you see this relationship between earnings and price. Now here you've got a much slower growth rate, 2.36%. And you've got a PE ratio of fair value because of the slow growth would calculate at 13 times earnings. But then in this case, the blue line becomes more important because now we're drawing that blue line at a 16 PE ratio. And what you do by looking at this, it allows you to see the company's been a slow grower, prices tracked earnings, the company company is currently overvalued because the price is significantly above both the blue line and the orange line. Now I do want you to notice something. Part of the reason the growth is so slow here is because we had one very strong down year in 2001. If I take that off of the graph, and this is the dynamic nature of the graph, now this you get a little cleaner perspective of Southern Company here. Now you've got a PE of 15 on the orange line, and you've got a PE of 16.3 on the blue line. And again, this allows you just by its glancing across the graph here to see what a normal valuation is, you see these reversions to the mean. You see the optimum time to buy this stock is when the price is either touching the orange line or better yet when it's below it. But you also see that you end up seeing some what I'll call less than optimum times to buy the stock when the price gets above either one of these valuation reference lines like it's done recently. And then you see this continuous reversion to the mean going on. Again, you can quickly go to Fast Facts.
index, you see the blended P is 18.5. Earnings yield is 5.4, which is low. Uh, the dividend yield is still good, though, at 4.41%, which is typical for utilities. We got a growth rate here now of 3.6%. We've got an A- minus rated company with 59% long-term debt to capital, a market cap of $61 billion, but $113 billion total enterprise value. And of course, that includes debt. With my third example, I want to bring in Asina Retail Group, which is an apparel retailer. And here I want you to notice a couple of things that you instantly get a perspective of. First of all, you clearly see how earnings drive market price in the long run. You see these disconnects where the stock got disconnected from the earnings line, got overvalued, then it got undervalued. But you also see even when the stock is touching the orange line at fair value, if the orange line is collapsing, of course, the stock price is going to collapse. Clearly, this is a great example example of how the business is what ultimately drives the results. Because when I look at long-term performance here, we see a negative 16% annualized rate of return on this stock, turning $10,000 into $310 over this time frame. I also want you to notice there's no dividend on this graph. I see that instantly by looking at the chart. It's a triple C minus credit rating, which means it's very highly likely to go bankrupt and it has 88% long-term debt to capital. And we can't even calculate a PE ratio or anything. So clearly, Clearly, the fast graph tool allows you to see that instantaneously just by glancing at the graph. With my fourth example, I'm going to take a look at another cyclical stock, Caterpillar. What I want you to be able to get from this graph is, now that you know how the tool works, the dividend record is very clean. The payout ratio varies because of the cyclicality. It was 77% when earnings were real low coming out of the Great Recession, but then it was only 24% when earnings were growing dramatically coming out of the Great Recession. But here you get to see the fact that the company has a great dividend record record, but they have a very cyclical operating history and the stock price is going to react to that cyclical operating history. Now in the long run, you could still do pretty well with a cyclical stock like this, especially from the dividend income. Again, that offering a 3.34% dividend yield. It's got an earnings yield of 6.9%, which is kind of a considered attractive. But notice that because of COVID that the earnings are falling here. So this would immediately alert you that you might want to be careful with this stock and you might be on the wrong end of the cycle here. Fast graphs help you see that very clearly. In addition to looking at dividend growth stocks or cyclical stocks, Fastgraphs is also a great tool for looking at high growth stocks. Here we have Facebook. I want you to notice there's no dividend. We've got a growth rate of 33.27% and therefore we apply the P equals growth rate formula that Peter Lynch made famous. And so the orange line is drawn at a PE of 33. And then because there was overvaluation back here, the blue line is being drawn at a PE ratio of 38. But again, those are valuation references. But clearly you you can see that the company's value, in this case, it's all capital appreciation, was driven by the growth of the company. We have a 29% annualized rate of return, which is very, very close to the 33% growth rate that the company achieved. The only reason it's a little lower is because we had this 57 PE ratio at the beginning. But again, you instantly see this by looking at a fast graph. And right now, Facebook looks like it's fairly valued relative to its growth. And keep in mind, with very, very high growth potential like this, even though this might be a little little bit above the orange line, you still have an opportunity to make a very nice capital appreciation return by investing in Facebook. Now, in addition to everything else I've said about the fast graph research tool so far, I also want you to clearly understand, and I want to clearly state that it's a great valuation tool. And this is probably the quintessential example of a stock that became massively overvalued. And it represents the notion that the markets misappraise stocks from time to time. It's not always an efficient market. Here, the PE was over 130. And I want you to to notice that had you bought that stock 20 years ago and held it, you'd actually have a negative rate of return after 20 years of holding the stock because the valuation was so high. But the company grew at 8.77%. But you can also see that even when you have less than the big extreme valuation you saw there, that when you overpay more for a stock than you should be, your rates of return can be relatively meager. Now, once you can buy the stock at attractive value, you can see you can start making some pretty attractive rates of return. Here we got a 14 percent rate of return. But I also want you to notice that another thing that this graph allows me to show is the stock started paying a dividend in 2011. The dividend's grown very nicely. They pay out about 40 percent-ish of their earnings in dividends. And you can see that here's a case where you can see how strongly that was. Now the valuation reference line, the blue line in this graph gets a little distorted because of these high valuations. So I do want to shorten this example so that you get to see that it adjusts that the more normal 
whole PE for this time frame has been about 14. And I'll even take another year off here so that you can see how the stock price goes where the earnings of the company go. With my next example, we'll look at Albemarle, which is the world's leading lithium producer. And again, just to reiterate, mainly I'm trying to show you here how fast graphs can help you make better investment decisions. You see stock price tracking earnings. You see a surge in earnings and the stock price where you see the hype of lithium with Tesla and the lithium batteries, etc. the greening of America, how the stock price got really overvalued and immediately corrected. And then now we've got the COVID coming on. And so now you've got estimates dropping again. But again, fast graphs gives you these perspectives. You see a very good dividend payment streak here and a company has a 30% ish dividend payout ratio. You get to see that instantly by looking at a fast graph. Fast graphs also work very well for unique type investments like real estate investment trusts or REITs. Here we've got the king of probably all REITs, realty income, the monthly income payer. And once again, now we're not using earnings here. We're using funds from operations, which is the appropriate metric for REITs. And fast graphs gives you that metric. Uh, you wouldn't want to look at REITs with earnings. But again, you clearly see the relationship between the company's business results, in this case, measured by FFO or funds from operations and the stock value. But you also see clear times when the market gets, you know, hypey with the stock and how it ends up reverting to the mean and it keeps coming back. And we also see times when the stock gets very inexpensive, then it eventually reverts to the mean. So fast graphs gives you these perspectives. REITs have to pay out the majority of their distributable income. And again, you see that very clearly that payout ratio of FFO for a REIT is very, very high. And I'm going to close this video out by taking a look at Amazon because not only does the tool work good for things like REITs, but some of these growth stocks like Amazon, who's purposely not trying to make a profit, we have several metrics that you can utilize. Warren Buffett's owner's earnings, which is, you know, his favorite metric. We have basic earnings, gap earnings. I've been using adjusted earnings so far, but then we got operating cash flow, which I'm showing Amazon with right here, free cash flow, and then things like EBITDA and EBIT, as well as net change in cash. So there's a lot of metrics that you can apply. I've just touched the surface of fast graphs. But even here with cash flow being so important to Amazon, you can see the relationship between the company's business and where its stock price goes in the long run. And all this great performance that Amazon has generated, which has been phenomenal for its shareholders is functionally related to how well the business does. And no tool does that, shows that better than fast graphs. And I'll end this video by saying this. If you like what you see here with the historical graphs, you ain't seen nothing yet. Wait till I get in and show you how powerful the fast graphs forecasting tool is. Because at the end of the day, forecasting future earnings is the key to long-term investment success. Because what I hope you see with this video is that in the long run, earnings determine market price. This has been Chuck Carville saying thanks for watching. I hope this gives you a clearer perspective of the fast graph research tool, how it works, and how it can help you make better investment decisions. Try our 14-day free trial. It doesn't cost anything. It's totally free. and It'll give you an opportunity to look at any stocks that you might own in your own portfolio and see how well the decisions you've been making have been. Thanks for watching. Look forward to talking to you again real soon.